In this chapter, we are going to learn about the calculation of yield to maturity. Before knowing yield to maturity, we should learn about some basic things such as debts, bonds and debentures. Normally, debt is a claim for money which is certain and expressed over an agreement. The debt includes bonds and debentures. The entities issue these debt agreements to borrow money from the public. The debts are usually classified as active and passive. Active debts are those what are due to us and passive debts are those what we owe to others. As indicated earlier, both of these agreements are used to get investments from the investors for the growth of business. But both are different in nature. Bonds are issued to raise long-term capital whereas debentures are mostly used for short-term capital. The long-term capital are funds that matures more than one year and the short-term capital are those that matures less than one year. Another difference lies in the security for the loan borrowed. In case of bonds, the amount is collaterally secured while in debentures it is secured only by the credit worthiness and reputation of the issuer. Hence, we can say that all debentures are bonds but not all bonds are debentures. Now, let's look about various terms associated with the bonds. Face value It indicates the amount borrowed by the issuer which it promises to repay after a specified period. Coupon rate The bond carries a specific rate of interest that is assigned by the issuer for the borrowed money. Premium and discount It is the differential rate with the coupon rate while selling the bond. Then coupon interest which is calculated by multiplying coupon rate and face value. Maturity It is a specified period that the issuer has promised to repay the borrowed amount. Redemption value It represents the value of bond while it matures. A bond is generally issued at a discount and redeemed at par. Market value It is the value of bond in the current market scenario. It may be different from the par value or redemption value. Intrinsic value which represents the present value of cash flow in the upcoming years until the bond matures. Current Yield If a bond is purchased at its current market price and the coupon interest is also received, it helps to calculate the rate of return earned on that bond. Hence, current yield will be calculated as coupon interest divided by current market price. Now, we are going to see the most important topic in this chapter, yield to maturity. It represents the rate of return earned by an investor who purchases a bond and holds it until the end of its lifetime. It can also be said as a discount rate that equals the present value of promised cash flows to the current market price. It is often known as book yield or redemption yield. The important equation representing the bond value is C by 1 plus R plus C by 1 plus R raised to 2 up to C by 1 plus R raised to Y plus B by 1 plus R raised to Y equals P where C is the annual coupon payment R the rate of return earned when the bond matures that is the yield to maturity Y the number of years to maturity B face value and P market purchase price of bond. For an example, let's calculate the yield to maturity of a bond selling at Rs 950 with coupon rate of 7% that matures in 4 years with face value of Rs 1000. According to the above mentioned formula, C is the annual interest payment that is coupon rate multiplied by the face value. So, C will be 7% multiplied by 1000 that will be 70. Y is 4 years, B 1000 and P 950. By substituting in the above equation, we get 
the value of R as 8.53%. This is the YTM. To see the current yield of this bond, we divide the coupon interest by current market price, which is equal to 70 by 950, that is 7.37 percentage. Now, let's see the important theorems of bond value. If the required rate of return equals coupon rate, then the value of bond is said to be at par. If the required rate of return is greater than the coupon rate, then the value of bond is at discount. And this discount declines as bond matures. If the required rate of return is less than coupon rate, then the value of bond is said to be at premium. And the premium in this case also declines as bond matures. From these theorems, we can state the following. If the bond is said to be selling at par, then its coupon rate, current yield and yield to maturity should be equal. If the coupon rate is less than current yield, that is less than yield to maturity, then the bond is selling at discount. If the coupon rate is higher than current yield and both is higher than yield to maturity, then it is selling at premium. Always remember these conditions to easily find the characteristics of a bond. Now let's calculate the value of bond with face value of rupees 1000 with 12% coupon rate and 3 years maturity. The required rate of return is 10%. From the question itself, it is very clear that the yield to maturity, that is 10%, is less than the coupon rate of 12%. That means, from the previous table, definitely the bond is at premium, that is, its value is higher than the face value of rupees 1000. By taking the bond equation, we have B equals 1000, C equals 120, Y equals 3, and R equals 0.1. By substituting these in the equation, we get 120 by 1.1 1 .1 plus 120 by 1.1 1 .1 raised to 2 plus 120 by 1.1 1 .1 raised to 3 plus 1000 by 1.1 1 .1 raised to 3 equals P, which gives P as 1049.73. This is the market value of bond. Till now, we have seen the bonds with annual interest payments. Now, we will see the bonds with semi-annual interest. These bonds fetch a higher value due to the reinvestment of the half-yearly interest. To calculate the value of this kind of bonds, we have to double the term to maturity and half the value of both annual coupon payment and discount rate in the bond equation. This is done due to the interest which comes twice a year. So the modified equation is C by 2 divided by 1 plus R by 2 plus C by 2 divided by 1 plus R by 2 raised to 2 up to C by 2 divided by 1 plus R by 2 raised to 2y plus B by 1 plus R by 2 raised to 2y equals P. Let's take the previous example with semi-annual coupon rate payment. As in the earlier case, B will be 1000, C 120, Y 3 and R 0.1. By substituting these in the modified equation, we get 60 by 1.05 plus 60 by 1.05 raised to 2 up to 60 by 1.05 raised to 6 plus 1000 by 1.05 raised to 6 equals P which gives P as 1050.755 With these examples, we can clearly understand that the value of bonds with semi-annual interest is higher than those with annual interest. 
Another important topic in this chapter is duration of bond. The investors investing in a bond mainly look on two things: the reinvestment of annual interest and the capital gain or loss on a sale of bond at the end of the holding period. When the interest rates rise, there is a gain in reinvestment and a loss of liquidation. And the converse is true when interest rate falls. For any bond, these two effects exactly balance each other for a holding period. That is, for this holding period, there will be no interest rate risk. This holding period is known as duration of bond. It is also known as Macaulay duration, as the concept was first introduced by F. Macaulay. Duration of a perpetual bond, that is, bond with indefinite holding period, is calculated by 1 plus R by R, where R is the current yield of the bond. Other terms in this chapter are bond volatility. It represents the sensitivity of bond price with the interest rate fluctuations. Interest rate elasticity. It is the percentage change in the price of bond to the percentage change in the yield to maturity of bond. It is calculated by duration multiplied by YTM by 1 plus YTM. Now we look at some relationships between these terms. Duration is usually less than the term to maturity. Both will be equal only in the case of zero coupon bonds. The value of bond is directly proportional to the duration of bond and inversely proportional to YTM. Hence, duration is inversely proportional to YTM. One of the properties of duration is that larger the coupon rate, smaller will be the duration of bond. Another important property is that duration of bond always decline as bond approaches its maturity.